welcome to another episode of the Heavy Metal Gamer video blog. And I guess you could say I've had this on my mind for a little while now. I figured it's time to do a video blog on it, kind of express how I feel. Now not too long ago there was a Metroid 2 fan game that was released to the internet for free. A lot of people grabbed it before we all knew what was coming. It's gonna get shut down. It did get shut down. At first it was going around that Nintendo didn't shut it down, that somebody was a fake Nintendo employee, and then it came out as, yes, it was Nintendo. A lot of people got pissed off at Nintendo for this, but I don't think people realize that Nintendo can do that. First of all, they created the Metroid property. They own it. Unless they sell it off, they have the right to take down fan games. I don't know why people are pissed off at that. I really don't. Now, before somebody says, Oh, but you have reviewed fan games and you said how much you love fan games. You're just a hypocrite. Not once have I said I am happy for Nintendo shutting them down. You see, this is how I feel about it. Yes, it sucks. Personally, I think Nintendo should embrace fan games. But they can do that, and there's no reason for me to be mad about it. Not one reason. They are protecting what they own. And I totally understand that. Let me use a scenario here for you. If I was an indie game developer, and I made a platformer game, or I brought a new character in that everybody loved, and people started making fan games of that character. If I wanted to, since I own the rights to that character and to that series, I could shut down that fan game. Would I do it? No, I probably wouldn't. Because personally, I know that fan games are a great thing. But I have no reason to be pissed off at Nintendo for shutting it down. Of course, there are ways you can get the game. There are a few websites that have it out there for you to download. People are putting it up on Mediafire and all of that and sharing it with their friends. So the game is still getting out there. Now, really, if you look on the Internet, there are still quite a few fan games that have Nintendo characters. There's a website catered to Mario, and there's hundreds of fan games on there. I have them all downloaded and saved on external hard drives. I mean, they're just scattered between all my external hard drives. i got to organize them. But I have plans to review some of them. Now really, the only thing I can think of is how Nintendo found out about this. It's because the gaming media started posting about it. I know there was a Kotaku story. Destructoid, I think, had a story. GameSpot, I think, even was talking about it. And while it's cool to get your fan game out there, at the same time, Nintendo's going to come across it, or any developer, and they're going to say, hey, I don't think you should do that. Or they're going to send you a cease and desist letter. It's just funny seeing all these people pissed off at Nintendo over this. But they fail to realize what they're doing is protecting their property. People need to remember that Nintendo isn't the only company that has done this. There has been fan games in the past that other developers have shut down. Sega did it with the Streets of Rage remake or whatever the hell it was. I'm surprised they didn't go after the whole Beats of Rage thing, too. That kind of surprises me. Konami went after a Contra fan game. It was a long while ago, and it was very well done for its time, but they went after them. This was before Konami became a shit stain. Then there was Capcom that did it with a Mega Man fan game, a Final Fight fan game, and there was another series. But then later on, they pretty much wanted to take all the credit for that Mega Man Street Fighter crossover game, which was really a shitty move. Now, one thing I've brought up in the past that was a smart move by Capcom was going after the whole Ghost and Goblins reboot or whatever the hell it was. That was on Kickstarter a handful of years ago. I used to kind of get pissed off when developers did this, but then I realized, why should I be pissed off at them protecting what they own? I don't blame them for doing what they do. Hell, I don't blame Konami. I don't blame Capcom. I don't blame Sega. But at the same time, I think these developers need to embrace these fan games and realize that, hey, people love these games. They want to kind of make their own style of game. Let them. It sucks that a lot of these projects have been shut down. Of course, they're not going to be able to shut down every single fan game out there. And I think developers like Capcom and Sega have embraced these fan games, and even ROM hacks. And hopefully one day Nintendo does the same thing. But all of these people pissed off at Nintendo, 
There's no reason to be pissed off at them. Kind of think from their point of view on this. Of course, you have those that make up conspiracies and goofy shit, and it's just like, really? You got your tinfoil hat on? Come on now, it's ridiculous. Anyways, what is your thoughts on this? Do you think Nintendo's stupid for doing this? Do you think Nintendo is well within the right to do this? Do you think that people should be mad? What do you think of the fan game? I personally haven't played much of it. Just enough to record a little footage for this video. But eventually I'll sit down and play it. Maybe one day I will do a review on it. Of course, I want to review the original Metroid 2 on, on the Game Boy. And then I do want to review the original Metroid. But I'm going to be honest with you, those games kind of kicked my ass a little bit, so... Because I really wasn't good at them when I was a kid. Anyways, that is it for this video blog. I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching.